Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 1 for March the 6th, 2016. We begin a new unit today, uh, Unit 1, entitled Tests of Faith. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Flame and Flood. Flame and Flood. The devotional reading is taken from Genesis chapter... 50 verses 15 through 21. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, uh, verses 14 through 29. That is our print passage today, also taken from Mark, chapter 9, verses 14 through 29. Our key verse reads Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. That is taken from Mark chapter 9 verse 24. Our lesson aims for this lesson is to recall the details of the failure of the disciples to deliver the child from demon possession, even though Jesus was then able to do so. Number two, to contemplate the faith that it takes to use power uh, of Jesus Christ to minister to others. And the third aim is to believe that their prayers have real power and increase their prayer witness in the church. We have four outlines today that we will be discussing from the Gospel according to Mark. Uh, the first one is entitled The Perturbed Father. Second outline is entitled The Powerless Disciples. Uh, the third line, outline is entitled The Possessed Boy. And the fourth outline is entitled, The Power of the Savior. We certainly thank and praise God for the privilege again to be able to share another word with you uh, from our Sunday School lesson. One that we hope that you will follow along with us as we um, uh, review some of the accounts uh, during Jesus' ministry. But I want to share a little bit about the uh, gospel according to Mark and uh, his purpose of the gospel uh, is to present um, in writing the witness of the apostles to the facts of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Mark does not intend to write a full biography or even complete uh, the account of Jesus' public ministry. But a little bit of the biblical context is as follows. The context set forth the miracle of the demoniac boy. The Lord, along with Peter, James, and John, had been on the Mount of Transfiguration in the presence of the Shekinah glory of God. What a contrast. They left from communion with his father to contend with the devil. They left from the harmony of fellowship with Moses and Elijah to face the hatred and murderous intents of the religious leaders thirsting for his blood. On the mountain we see the king in his supernatural splendor. Below we have his disciples baffled and beaten. The mission on the mount, however, was for the valley of need. We should be keenly aware that the same compassion that brought Jesus down from, the, from heaven to earth now brings him down from the Mount of Transfiguration to the Valley of Suffering Service. So we want to note uh, that Mark uh, presents Christ Jesus as servant. Um, I believe the 10th chapter of Mark uh, gives us some insight into uh, the purpose of Christ's coming. And we want to read that before we uh, start in, in these outlines. The 10th chapter of the Gospel of, uh, according to Mark and uh, verse 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so Mark uh, shares with us uh, in his gospel uh, these accounts 
uh, that Jesus uh, um, was a blessing to uh, many folk that uh, came in contact with uh, who had various conditions and I want to say a little bit about demonism uh, you may um, not understand that you probably should uh, but we want to be able to understand that it is a reality uh, unclean spirits if you will um, and the sooner we understand this uh, the better off we will be uh, as we get a little bit further into this lesson uh, we're going to talk about the type of, of uh, uh, Christian uh, journey that we're on uh, we know we understand uh, that it is a spiritual journey uh, we understand that uh, we are wrestling not with flesh and blood, with blood uh, as Ephesians chapter 6 helps us to understand. But Ephesians chapter 1, if you would read that at your leisure, it will help you understand that Christ has given us, given us everything that we need to survive in the spiritual realm, uh, that sphere of activity. So we want to be able to keep that in mind. Uh, that this uh, demonism, if you will, this doctrine uh, is a reality. Mark's Gospel is the briefest of the four Gospels, and it is a narrative of uh, dynamic movement and action. Uh, the words straightway and immediately uh, used some 40 times in the King's James, King James Version. And so you may see that as we did in the key verse. Um, the King James Version says straightway the father of the child cried out. Uh, and the uh, NIV translation uh, says immediately uh, the boy's father ex exclaimed. So we want to make note of that. Uh, straightway means immediately forthwith or soon. Uh, so we want to be able to appreciate that. But let's look uh, a little bit at this first outline entitled The Perturbed Father. This is taken from uh, Mark chapter 9 verses uh, 14 through 18. And I think I will read this from the NIV translation. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. Verse 16, What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit but they could not. And so we want to uh, understand uh, a few things uh, uh, about this first outline uh, that we can appreciate here uh, that uh, demon possession is clearly distinguished from uh, normal illness. I want you to look at Mark chapter 7 verses 31 through 37. Though in both cases the person cannot speak. I also want you to look at Mark chapter 1 verse 24 and verse 25 and Mark chapter 5 uh, verses 2 through 15. So here this father of this boy uh, who had this condition on him, he uh, went to the disciples uh, that they may uh, deliver this young boy uh, but the father uh, lets Jesus know here uh, that the disciples were unable to do it so this this commentary says Jesus and three of his disciples Peter James and John had been on a high mountain on which the Lord was transfigured life was so much better and so much nearer to God there on the mountaintop that inspired Peter to say, Rabbi, 
it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters. In today's vernacular, it would be, Lord, let's just stay here. Why do we have to go down from here? Having come down from the mountain, the Lord and his accompanying inner three disciples noticed a large crowd of people disputing with the teachers of the law. However, when the members of the gathering saw Jesus, they immediately ran to greet him. And Jesus then asked this logical question, What are you arguing about with them? A man from a group who was both sad and frustrated said to Jesus, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. His father would watch his son suffer under the control of this evil spirit. You know, this is something that uh, the church, uh, um, in its contemporary state, does not want to address, does not want to talk about. But we should understand this is a reality of uh, of our faith. This is a reality in life that uh, uh, I believe uh, John, uh, the apostle, said these words. He said, "The children of God and the children of the devil are obvious." And and what I mean by that is there are obvious things that are of the devil that we should understand need the delivering and saving power of Jesus Christ, and we need to have faith. Um, in that power all of us uh, need to appreciate this because these things are happening but you can see the dilemma that this father is in concerning his son uh, that he brought his son to the church or he asked the disciples if you will to address this issue and they were unable to address it so we have to be mindful today that there are many conditions that, that are brought uh, and that exist in the church. And we need to, by faith and the gospel, be able to address these things. But here, the question is asked in the, in the uh, quarterly, what are your thoughts concerning evil spirits? How are they related to mental and or physical illnesses? What should be the posture of the church? toward this. When I read this, I thought about this question. What is the church made of? If you look at our background, all of us that say we are saints of God, at some point we met Jesus Christ as Savior and he delivered us uh, from the evil that was ruling our lives. So the answer to that question, we are, we are sinners saved by the grace of God and many of us have had conditions and things come up on our body that we have prayed and we have talked about to the Lord and he has helped us tremendously and blessed us I want you to read we won't have time to get into all these scriptures today uh, but I want you to look at 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 11 Psalm 103 uh, verses 1 through 5 you can read all of that but I highlighted those first five verses just to illustrate the point of what Jesus is able to do and then I want you to read Psalm 107 uh, verses 1 through 3 uh, and, and, and that particular psalm just tells us to let the redeemed of the Lord say so uh, we need to be able to share this is what the good news is all about uh, Jesus is able to deliver, to set free all of us. Your condition may have been different from mine and mine from yours. But the same Jesus that saved me from my sins and, and healed my disease. And we don't think about uh, sin as a sickness, but it is. And we don't think about that sin is a disease, but it is. Uh, but Jesus is able uh, to fulfill our every need in terms of of blessing us and healing us and this is throughout the gospel of according to mark he talks about all of these different conditions 
uh, that was uh, affecting the people at that time. And these individuals got to Jesus and Jesus delivered them. So we're going to see a little bit further in this lesson what happened uh, and why we are so ineffective today uh, in a lot of our churches. So this uh, second outline is a short one but a powerful one. It's entitled The Powerless Disciples. This is Mark chapter 9 verse 19. Again, from the NIV translation, Jesus says here, O unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So Jesus' response in verse 19 to this man's anguish appears to be basically a rebuke to the Jews and their scribes. Even though Jesus was clearly frustrated over the lack of faith of the math masses, he was also upset about the weakness of the faith of his own disciples. The Lord referred to them as old faithless generation. The word faithless has come to mean treacherous, not keeping faith. But the Greek word here means unbelieving. The disciples were included in this rebuke. They of all men should have had the necessary faith to cast out the demon. Uh, and, and that's what I said earlier. All of us have had experience uh, in deliverance of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we ought to know what it's all about. And we ought to know if you look at your past and where the Lord has brought you from. Don't you think he is able to deliver someone else? Don't you think he is capable and has enough power uh, uh, to sustain and to bless and to uh, set free? So we just need to understand that we need to employ our faith. And what the Bible has told us and, and how to be able to pray. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we go along. So the words... They could not, in verse 18, is a pitiful phrase, one that carried a sting with it, and is still a pain and a wound to our Lord to see his church stand impotent and depressed amid the woes of the world. She, when she ought to be an effective catalyst for change. So that is very powerful for us to understand uh, that there is nothing uh, Luke one thirty seven tells us that there is nothing impossible with God. All things are possible to them that believe. But the disciples here uh, expressed what the uh, a commentary calls pitiful. And that's a sad thing to say about us as Christians. Uh, that we don't have the faith or we just turn our backs as though God is not able. And so Jesus rebuked them. Uh, for their lack of faith. And so we have to grow stronger. Uh, and, and the way we do that is to continue to hear the word. The Bible said faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So we have to have the word of God preached over us. And we need to hear it and digest it and incorporate it. So when the time comes we'll have something to use against the enemy. So here, if you want to have faith, what that simply means is to be, to be confident or to have a, a confident expectation that God is able. So here, the church at this time, uh, we could call it, we're calling it the church, but they are the disciples. Uh, they represent uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, they were lacking power, impotent, and, or strength. So here the question is asked, in what ways is the church failing to appropriate the faith that we should, to ha uh, should have to address the various uh, uh, maladies uh, of society? So we have to, or maladies, I'm sorry, uh, of society. So we have to be able to address these things uh, with faith uh, and, and understanding that God is able there are some situations that we are looking at today that looks beyond our control and we are worried and concerned. 
But let us always remember, God is able. Christ can save to the uttermost. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 7, uh, verse 24 and 25. So here, the third outline is entitled, The Possessed Boy. This is taken from uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 20 through 24. Again, from the NIV translation. So they brought him, when the, evil, when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Verse 23, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Very powerful uh, passage here. Uh, this young boy had been troubled by the devil uh, since he was a child. And can you imagine here, verse 22, it says it was throwing him into fire or water to kill him. Uh, but if you can do anything, this father says, uh, have mercy, take pity on us and help us. And we need to do that today. That is a very powerful prayer to pray Lord have mercy on me take pity on my condition uh, this father is overwhelmed uh, not being able to handle his own child but watching his child uh, this boy out of control trying to kill himself throwing himself into the water and we have a lot of, of uh, uh, people today a lot of our young people are destructive uh, in nature they are practicing uh, destructive methods and what do we do about those things how do we address those things some of us may have children that are out of control what do we do about these situations well have you tried Jesus the Bible is telling us here and we have to take Jesus at his word he said everything is possible for one who believes so we have to concern ourselves with our faith. Where are we in terms of our faith? Where are we in terms of our lives with Christ that we believe what he says? Where are we in our prayer lives? And, and, and where are we in, in holding fast uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the word of God? So there are a lot of things that are taking place. Uh, in society today and we are trying everything else but faith in Jesus Christ but Jesus is saying some things here to help us to understand uh, and he asked this father he said after the father said if, if you can you know and Jesus responds to him and everything is possible I'm not limited there's nothing I can't do what do you mean to ask me uh, the question about if you can. Certainly I can. But here. I love what the father. Does here. He says he believes. But he's struggling. In unbelief. Have you ever been there? We all have. We all have doubted. Uh, at some point. We all have had fears. But he's confessing here. That he has a problem. In his faith. There are a lot of problems in society, but a lot of people will not tell you that they have a uh, struggling with unbelief. That this father confesses. He said, I do believe, but help me overcome. Help me get over this thing of, of not believing or taking you at your word. Help me get over uh, my doubts and my fears. And that's an awesome prayer to pray uh, because we... Just because we are weak does not mean that we are cast out. But we need to become strong. And one way that we can do that is through prayer. Uh, casting as uh, uh, Philippians 
uh, chapter 4 helps us to understand casting all of our cares. This is a concern in society today, not just the killing and, and all of the other things that we are seeing, but the problem in society, one of the biggest problems we're having is unbelief. We're pushing God to the back. We're pushing his word aside. We're pushing the preacher aside. and We don't want the prayers and all of these kinds of things. Well, let me just tell you this. The devil is so glad to hear us say that, that we don't want Christ. He is so glad to hear us say that we don't want to ad uh, adhere to the word of God. So we are giving more uh, uh, credibility, if you will, and more power to the enemy by refusing Christ. We have to stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So we need to understand these things. Uh, but this is an awesome thing that this father is doing. He is concerned about his boy. When the boy was brought to Jesus, the spirit which possessed the boy immediately recognized Jesus and caused a convulsion. The boy fell to the ground, foaming at the mouth. This was a concrete demonstration of the description the father gave in verse 18. As Jesus observed what was happening to the boy, he asked the father how long this had been happening. The answer given by the father was that this had been happening since childhood. The text says further that the boy's pitiful plight often resulted in his falling into fire or water designed to kill him. It is clear that the purpose of the demoniac activity or demonic activity is to destroy people. The father's prayerful plea was seen in verse 22 where he said to Jesus, If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Jesus' response in verse 23 was profound. He began by using the Father's own words, if you can. In essence, Jesus was saying that it is not a matter of if I, it is a, it is a matter of faith. In fact, we see this clearly in the second part of verse 23 where Jesus said everything is possible for one who believes. The Father's response in verse 24 showed the spontaneous spiritual growth of his father. He said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Thank God this father brought his son to Jesus. You know, with everything that we see today, and everyone that has given us their thoughts on what it's going to take to resolve the problem, and I give them every ounce of credit because they are trying in their own strength based on their positions and things like that. But let me tell you something. It's going to take the power of God to bring us out of the dark, to set our children free. These are heart problems that we are seeing manifest through our hands in terms of the things that we do to one another. These are mind problems. Uh, uh, that 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 affecting so many things that the Lord have delivered us from. We were in a pitiful state, all of us that say we are saved. So we know if if the Lord had not saved you, let me just say this, and had not saved me, we would not be here this day. So it is possible what it uh, took for you is going to take for others. And we need to stretch out on faith and call on the name of the Lord on behalf of our family members and our children and, and, and society and our communities and the world at large. We are in spiritual trouble. We have rejected God on every level and we are paying a just penalty for that. But God wants us to repent, to come to him, to come back and return and repent of our sins and, and lay our case before him. We need to do this individually and we need to do this corporately. So I want to keep that in mind. What do you think 
the question Jesus asked the Father in verse 21 revealed about Jesus. So we talked about that. But going on to this last outline entitled The Power of the Savior. This is taken from Mark chapter 9 uh, verses 25 through 29. Again from the NIV translation. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to the scene. He rebuked the evil spirit. The deaf and mute spirit. He said I command you. Come out of him. And never enter him again. The spirit shrieked. Convulsed him violently. And came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse. That many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up after Jesus had gone indoors his disciples asked him privately why couldn't we drive it out verse 29 he replied this kind come out only by prayer in the uh, King James version it says uh this kind come forth but uh, by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So we see a little difference there. But making sacrifices uh, to determine God's will in a matter uh, is a great uh, principle on fasting. But prayer, fervent prayer, concerted prayer. Uh, this is what we have to do. You know, growing up as a child in the church, uh, the saints, they did that religiously. Not to say that we don't, but they had such a foundation for prayer. It didn't take them long to get together and to come to your house and to get around your bed and to uh, come wherever you were in the hospitals and various places. And they went in prayer. Uh, a lot of times they would pray hour on the hour. In other words, at the beginning of every hour. Uh, sometimes that would go on for 12 or 24 hours. And people fasted back then for your healing and for your deliverance. And, you know, people were concerned about what you were going through. And this is the generation that I, uh, my forefathers that I grew under. And uh, I learned a lot from them just about uh, uh, the, the how genuine they were about your relief and your deliverance and, and we're going to have to get together not just uh, a bunch of people in a room but we're going to have to come together in spirit and we're going to have to come together in God's word that we all agree in the same gospel in the same savior if we would you know, come together on these basics uh, and not divide and not separate one another. How strong do you think we would be? We would have strength for everything that came our way. Uh, but now we seem to be uh, running for cover as though God is not able. But I challenge us today to read this lesson and study this text and and wherever you see a weakness in your faith, uh, then you need to talk to God about that. That's what it's going to take to save our families, to save our children, and uh, to save our loved ones, to see them make it in life. Uh, we're going to have to pray. Uh, we're going to have to call on the name of the Lord and commit ourselves to fasting and praying uh, that our children... Uh, if, if this father had not stepped forward, uh, can you imagine he went to the disciples and uh, they couldn't do it. But he kept on and he got to Jesus uh, and he laid his case before Christ and, and Christ delivered his boy. So here after asking about the boy's condition from his father, Jesus ordered the evil spirit out of the boy and demanding that it not return. I command you, Jesus said. And the demon dare not uh, disobey the divine order coming from Jesus. Any return into the boy was barred and never entered him again. Let me say this. How do you think you are kept from day to day? 
Do you think it's in your strength or in the power of God that he protects you? Peter said it this way. He said we are protected by the power of God. So don't ever think that it is just because you're saved that it's in your strength and your ability that you still remain. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not be here today. But Jesus commanded this spirit to come out of this boy and never enter him again. So you know this boy would have peace for the rest of his days. The result was that after shrieking and being violently convulsed, the boy became like a corpse and onlookers thought he was dead. All of humankind needs to acknowledge and fully know that there is no case or condition, no matter how difficult or demon possessed, that it is too hard for the Son of God to handle. Jesus then took the boy by the hand and lifted him to his feet. Do you see yourself? How he brought you out with a mighty and an outstretched arm. He stood you up on your feet. Do you see that in your life today? And he, Jesus, uh, the boy stood up and was cured immediately. After this demonstration of the power of God through Jesus Christ. The disciples recognizing their awful failure asked the master, Why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus replied by saying, this kind can come out only by prayer. Then why don't we pray? If we're dealing uh, with conditions in our bodies and in our minds and in our spirits, our family members are struggling with conditions, why won't we pray? And you might say, well, I have been praying and it hasn't happened yet. Well, let me just say this. Don't lose the faith. As you wait on God. God has many ways of doing. We just are, we are looking at a sample of his delivering power today. God has many ways of delivering someone. Even if he has to take them out of this life. So let us be prayerful and mindful. And not try to uh, uh, figure that God is taking too long. The children of Israel cried out over 400 years. I guarantee you, you haven't prayed that long. And after God heard all of those prayers after such a long time, in Exodus chapter, chapter 3, he tells Moses, I am ready to bring my people out. But Lord, why does it take so long? Well, we know he had been hearing their prayers and we know that he had been watching uh, the situation. But none of us know why God moves uh, uh, the way he moves. But he tells us in his word that he is not like man. Uh, he doesn't do things the way we do. He tells us in his word that his ways are not our ways. And his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we just don't know. And I'm happy to report that to you today. I don't know when the Lord is going to do what you need him to do. What I am saying to you today I know he's able, and I am a living witness of Christ delivering power, and so are you. So we want you to be encouraged today. We want you to be vigilant in prayer. We want you to continue to, to, to keep your situation before God. Uh, he neither slumbers nor sleeps, and his eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Here our closing prayer is offered for this lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, the God of providence, nature, and grace, we thank you for your gracious grace and your tender mercies. We continue to thank you for showing up when we fail in order to sustain us and soothe us with an unfaltering trust. Jesus is your Son and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we certainly thank and praise God for this lesson today. I enjoyed being able to share this with you and just to help all of us uh, as we go uh, in and on this journey. And I know it's tough for you and it's, it's tough for me, but we need lessons like this to help us, to encourage us to, to, to hold on to our, uh, to our faith and to hold to God's unchanging 
hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. God is so able today. So again, we thank God for you until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. We say God bless you.